to Mini Lotter, this is Sammy. Today we're gonna paint one of the warriors of Rohan. We're actually gonna paint a whole bunch of them. And I'm gonna try to make them look as awesome as they were in this intro. To start off, I start using Caliban Green for his green cloak. And we're gonna start building up the layers of this coat first of all. Once that coat is dry, we're gonna apply some Nuln oil. To give it some depth before we give it a dry brush of my least favorite green to pronounce but somehow a green I always fall back to Sibarite green don't know if I'm saying that correctly as you can see I use a piece of cardboard to get my brush as clean as possible before I start dry brushing. I use cardboard because it doesn't absorb any of the paint. Now we're gonna start painting the inner tunic of the Rohan warrior. I use Cortor Brown. And to make the warriors a little bit more varied you can use pretty much any brown you want. This is just a color scheme I tend to always fall back to when I'm painting warriors of Rohan. Next step is Rhinox height. We're gonna paint the upper tunic now. And if you look carefully on this model you see he has a little bit of a sleeve sticking out of from behind his cloak. We're gonna try and get that as well with Rhinox height. Pain blade brown I use for the quiver. Once again you could use something completely different for the quiver. I don't tend to give it a lot of detail, mostly because it's just normal infantry. Now we're gonna use some iron breaker for the metal parts. If your Rohan warrior has leather armor instead, you can use the technique I'm gonna use for his shin guards. And that will make the leather look nice. And if you have seen my ranger video, you'll know what it's gonna entail. I use it for a lot of models because it's easy and it looks surprisingly well for the amount of effort you put in. Now next up is Murfang Brown. I use it for the wood of his bow. And also every part I want to paint in a leathery color, like the top of his helm, his shin guards and his feet as well, I do more fang brown. And uh, we're gonna differentiate uh, more fang brown layers later on with some contrast paints. Now we're gonna use Cadian Flash Tone for his face and hands. I like to do it right about now before I paint the copper of his helmet because I like to work from the lowest part up in case of faces. Now before we forget we're gonna paint some was Daka red on the fletching of the arrows just so they are red as well like they are gonna answer the call made by another red arrow. Now comes a very fun part to shop the bone everywhere he has hair. If he has a beard we're gonna paint a beard with that. His luscious flowing locks as well and also if he has a shield we're gonna use that on the raised part of the shield. Like we see right here on this beautiful warrior. The shield we have already painted as well with Caliban green. But that's the only thing we have done to it so far. Now we're gonna use some white scar and we're gonna dry brush it on this on the shield just so it hits the red edges. And now skeleton hoard on the beard on the hair and also the shield, because of the little extra step with the white scar, the shield is gonna look a little bit different compared to the beard and hair. Now I shoot copper on the parts of the helmet we haven't painted yet. The flaps on the side, the little thing on the top of it, don't even know how you call it. Now 
Hagrax Earthshade on pretty much everything that is brown except for the parts we want to have a leathery, we want to look leathery. Because that's gonna be next with Snakebite Leather. We're gonna give the parts we painted Boarfang brown on the chins for example. Gonna give that a nice coat. And if you have a leather tunic warrior, use it on that and it's gonna look pretty good. It's a quick and easy way to get a nice leather effect. Reikland flash shade now for the face and hands. Try not to give it a whole lot of it. A little bit goes a long way. Cannot be sad with no oil for the metal parts. Because the more known oil the better. That's a rule in painting. <laughs> that I just made up. And wild wood for his feet. And to change things up you can also use it on a leather tunic as well. Just to give them a little bit of a different feel. So the army feels more varied. This is an example of how the shield looks in the end. I think this is pretty easy to repeat for about 24 warriors and the results look very good uh, for the amount of time we have put into this. And these are some pictures of the warriors all together and they look ready to take down some Buma kill and save Condor's ass once again. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, subscribe, leave a comment on what you want to see next. I'm probably planning on some more Dwarven content. Iron Hill Warriors have been re-released. I have ordered them and I'm already painting some of them up. Getting ready for one of the next videos. So see you in the next one. Bye!